This is Andy Purawa for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. I'm delighted to be by Malik Scott, trainer to Deontay Wilder, head of his trilogy battle with Tyson Fury. First and foremost, Malik, how are you? Good, brother. Good. Very happy as a head trainer. Love my position. Love the team that I'm at. Um, the guy that I'm training is very receptive. He's very dynamic. Um, He's the hardest punch in the history of the sport. And what I did in this training camp, I just went to his toolbox and made sure that we brought out all of his tools and he's going to use them all come you know, Saturday night. Let's just start off with that point, man. When you two linked up, what in particular most impressed you about Deontay and what did you think you didn't actually need to try and bring out of him? Well, you don't have to bring out killer instinct. You don't have to soul search with a fighter like Deontay Wilder. There's a lot of fighters you have to like put them like you have to put them on soul search missions. You don't have to do that with Deontay. He wants it. He wants it more than the trainer. He wants it more than the manager. He wants it. So um, that that's one right off the rip. The thing uh, uh, we'll say that I thought would be most difficult is slowing him down to do things correct and not being in a rush to do things. Because sometimes like. A lot of these guys like to be like going fast, and sometimes you'll miss the technique if you're going so fast. So there's times that Deontay is doing something, we'll stop it, slow it down. Uh-uh, that's too fast. Uh-uh, I want you moving at molasses pace. Uh-uh, slow it down more. Because it's almost like Joe Goosen, he always took, he, he, Joe Goosen gave me this um this quote. He said, uh, I went boxing the league, you know, it's always good for fighters to be in a, not, don't be in a rush, be in a hurry. Because being in a rush, you'll forget things. But being in a hurry, you'll make sure you're moving at a fast, suitable pace to get whatever job you need to get done. But don't be in a rush. And I was I, I was a little bit worried that a lot of times he would be in a rush. And there was times in training he was in a rush. And that's why he got guys like me, guys like Don House, to slow him down, you know, and get it done. When fight night comes, when he enters the ring, you know, when him and Tyson exchange, when Tyson lands on him for the first time, are there any concerns that maybe Deontay might revert back to his style of old? Um, so we'll say this. So that's that's a good question, so I, and I like to live off examples. So we'll say his 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 mission when he fought uh, Ortiz in the first fight was to set Ortiz up, box him, make him reach, and eventually make him pay. He got hurt with Ortiz, got hurt, got wobbled, and he stuck to the game plan after he got himself together. Um, his his mission was to seek and destroy against Eric Molina. He got hurt. He stuck with his game plan. He seek and destroy. So I'm trying to figure, like, like that, that, that statement and that question, to me, it makes sense if I have Deontay Wilder dancing on his toes like Muhammad Ali. So then the question would be, well, he going to get off his toes once somebody hit him. I don't have him doing nothing that he, like, th this whole thing, like, what he is more than anything is re-motivated, rejuvenated, re, like, I get it. But, but, but I didn't, like I said, man, I ain't do nothing but bring things out this dude that I know he can do. I just make sure we're doing them at a much more drill consistent pace. So it's like, um, what, what, what is the reinvention is how creative he is. The reinvention is his open mind. The reinvention is how he's doing things on a more consistent basis, but the actual punches and the selection of punches that's not reinvented he's been doing it I'm just helping him put it all together Malik how are you expecting the fight to play out on Saturday night when Deontay's in there and when Tyson's in there you know Tyson's spoken openly he wants to be aggressive he expects to knock out Deontay I know Deontay shares those same values yeah. is this one which plays out similar to the second fight in terms of Tyson coming forward but obviously different from your perspective with Deontay now the fight will end for him um I, I just think the fight is going to play out we have our game plan Tyson have his game plan. I truly believe if Deontay is 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 everything he's shown me in training camp, I, I just don't think whatever Tyson do, it won't fucking matter. Like, you know, and, you know that's like so, so cliche to say and coming up, you hear trainers say that all the time. We're not worried about the other guy. We're worried about us. And But that's how I really, really feel. Because I know, I, you got to realize, and, and it's coming from me, and it's because, like, I've been, I, 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 Tyson Fury is the only thing that's been on my mind for the last few months since we lost. Before that, when he was fighting, I would look at his fights. Before that, I was boxing him. Before that, you know what I mean? So it's like, I ain't really worried. I know what he come with. On his best, best day, I know what he's coming with. My job is to make sure the fighter I'm training is prepared for anything he can come with. And that's what I did. So however the fight play out, it play out. But I could just promise Deontay will, will be whatever he brings to the table. We'll be ready for him. Deontay was very calm up on the stage today, with the exception of maybe that last four or five minutes when I think Tyson tried to get underneath his skin. Did Tyson get underneath his skin? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, I don't think so at all. I think, um, uh, I think, I think that's been one of the most imperative things in our camp is for that not to happen. I think like Deontay is at a point now, and the wait has been so long for him wanting to get this done and do this that I really just don't think that's possible. I don't think, I don't even think Fury can get under his skin, but he could try, man. 
he could try. Tyson's obviously well, sorry, Deontay's made a lot of allegations against Tyson from the second fight. Mm. Do you yourself believe any of those as well? Um, I believe he has the right to to think that. Because, I mean, I don't know, we're looking at a person that have a history of shit like that. I mean, you look at the Christian Hammer fight, they fucking tampering with gloves. Like, they tampering with gloves and acting like the victim when the cameras come on them. Like, we're talking about somebody who will literally lie to the world and say him and Anthony Joshua has a fight and literally 11 hours later, a whole other fight is... Like, we, we literally talking about... But how do I keep it in perspective? Because this is someone that tells us he had issues. He tells us he have a problem. I'm initially un I'm mentally unstable. I'm in this mood one day. I'm in that. Then when he act like that, everybody like, why did he lie? He's telling y'all he a liar? This is the uncommon sense of human being. That's why I'm just not surprised about anything that Fury say or do. I don't take shit from him serious besides his skill set. That's it. And that's because I've seen it being in there with him and I see him do it on other opponents. That's it. Anything else, I don't, but like, it's just never no telling, man. It's never no telling. Final thing for me, because another cue's for me. What does Deontay Wilder see when he looks at Tyson Fury? He's, well, uh, I don't, don't want to say that. <laughs> but I want to say he thinks very violent. <laughs> yeah. yeah he, he thinks very, very violent. And he thinks, you know, uh, yeah, very violent. Malik, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Absolutely, brother. Thank you. <laughs>